Hi everyone, I'm Aristide from Metabolism of Cities and in this video I wanted to cover a topic that one of you watchers asked for. Roving Ways asked a video on the basics of circular economy and or its history would be useful. So thank you Roving Waves for this question and I think a number of you who might be professionals, students, researchers or policymakers focusing on the environmental sectors have heard this expression of circular economy. Since 2012-2015 it has taken the policy word by storm. Every major policy and action plan at a city, country or international level is now mentioning some types of a circular economy. But how did it get there and where did this concept originate from? In this video I wanted to share a brief history of the circular economy and provide you with some more nuance of what circular economy means and also what are some divergent points of view today on this uh, sometimes controversial topic. To discuss about all of these points let me just pull out some slides that will be helpful to illustrate. So let's start with kind of a brief definition of what circular economy is. If we had to summarize this, well, we have to start with what the linear economy is. And the linear economy is this process of taking materials from the natural environment, using them for a very short period of time, and then discarding them, creating different types of environmental impacts. Throughout this linear process from extraction, manufacturing, distribution, use, and um, and discarding or waste generation, there are many associated environmental impacts as well, from CO2 emissions, energy consumption, toxicity, and many other elements. So the circular economy says, why don't we take off the box of waste creation and instead re-inject uh, the number of flows exiting our system because either we don't have any use of them or because there is just one component that does not work and start repairing them, reusing them, remanufacturing them or even recycling them. So the idea is that we can maintain as much as possible materials in their original technical and economic value, maintain them by expanding their lifespan as much as possible in the given system, so it can be a city, a country or a company, and by that also reducing the associated environmental impact. However, this is a general overview of a definition of circular economy. When we look in policy documents, but also in academia, there is a plethora of circular economy um, definitions. Over here, a paper that was published already five years ago identified 114 definitions. And the authors themselves also produced another synthetic um, definition out of it. So you see that not all of us define circular economy in the same way. In this video, what I want to show you is that there are some common elements and some divergent elements when it comes to circular economy. So let me break it down into two things. I'll take, first of all, what are the common roots of circular economy? Some things that most of researchers, policymakers, practitioners uh, agree on the circular economy. And then we'll dive deeper on what are the divergent uh, pathways that the stakeholders take when it comes to circular economy. So let's start with the common roots. First of all, anyone agrees that the, the current linear system, as I showed you, going from extraction to manufacturing to use to discarding waste, is unsustainable today. So we can see that from Malthus saying that we have an exponential growth of population but a linear growth of, re, uh, of resource supply and that might lead to a collapse or something like that, to Kenneth Balding saying that anyone that believes exponential growth that can go on forever in a finite word is either a madman or an economist um, and dubbed this as the open cowboy economy where we just take as much as we want and then discard it afterwards. Um, to the limits of growth, limits to growth report that that highlighted how our linear economy is unsustainable, which might result into uh, some sort of collapse in the future. 
So we see that uh, numerous researchers coming from different fields all agree that today's linearity is unsustainable. That is one fundament of the circular economy. The second one is the ideal of a circularity. What I mean by that is that a number of researchers coming from ecology, coming from uh, economy, coming from uh, biology, all agree that circular or closed loops is something ideal. Ecologists, for instance, say that there is no waste in, in, in nature. They say that in nature all material uh, or resource cycles are closed. The water cycle, the carbon cycle, many of these cycles are balanced and are interconnected and make, um, and make these systems, uh, let's say, more sustainable. So we all kind of agree that in nature, waste, first of all, does not exist, and also nature makes everything closed loops. The second element is that even in industrial systems, there is this industrial ecology discipline that says that maybe we should think of industrial systems as natural systems. And instead of having waste from each of these um, industrial systems, we should somehow find interlinkages between the waste of one company and the resource needs of another one. And if we, if we can match them together, that's what we call an industrial symbiosis, well, we could have the waste from one industrial process that could serve as the, as the raw material for another, thereby reducing the impact of industry on the environment. This is the subtitle of the, the article that we have here below from Frosch and Galopoulos from 1989 that were one of the two persons that were two of the, the main persons um, behind industrial symbiosis and also of industrial ecology. So we see these two pieces that put forward that circularity is something to aspire for. Now, let's have a look at what circular economy was in the early days and how it has transformed over time. So while we can find really a, a point in time where circular economy was coined or that it kind of initiated this excitement within uh, the policy world, we can certainly find some hints and places around the world that have used the term since the 1990s. For instance, in Germany, circular economy and waste were already put together since the 1990s into a circular economy and waste law. And this was specifically um, put together for the waste industry and the, the grid operators or the public utilities from waste uh, collection and treatment. In Japan, it was also in the early 90s where they discussed about circular economy in order to have an effective use of recyclables, the promotion of efficient resource use, and also some laws of recycling. Again, once again, it was for waste regulation. Within China, at the early 2000s, circular economy was one pillar for the new sustainable development model of China, and circular economy was uh, promoted uh, in terms of uh, numerous laws. Over there, once again, uh, in China, uh, circular economy was seen as a resource management tool or a resource uh, management model, including the three R framework. So reduce, reuse, recycle. So after these, let's say, few examples around the world where there was a, a first attempt of using circular economy uh, for a waste regulation uh, model, there was a big excitement in terms of companies, in terms of policies, and in terms of a bit research as well. Um, it was in the 2010s where we saw uh, a numerous amount of reports coming from big international think tanks such as the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, the World Economic Forum, or even the uh, European Environmental Agency, where they start talking about what is circular economy, how circular economy is a great way to create more value or maintain value. So we see that in the 2010s, there was a lot of movement not only from policymakers, so the World Economic Forum, the European Commission or the European Union, there were national plans of circular economy and still are. At the same time, big multinationals such as Renault, Philips and many others, 
backed up circular economy and said that they need to adapt their business models to become more circular in order to reduce their environmental footprint, but also their waste generation. A number of consulting firms all put out reports of circular economy from McKinsey, Accenture or Deloitte. They all have reports of between 2010 and 2015 kind of defining what circular economy is and also mentioning what are the economic benefits of a circular economy, how many billions or trillions of dollars it could produce. And then also in that period, there was the formation or creation of a number of networks and of think tanks around circular economy. So you have the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, you have Circular Economy, you have the Circular Economy Club. Also in France, you have the Institut National de l'Economie Circulaire and many, many others. So after the 2010s, CE policies kind of flourished and blossomed into many different directions. While beforehand, as we saw, Germany and Japan used circular economy for public and waste uh, for public waste reg regulations. China, as we said before, used circular economy as a new model for sustainable economic development. In the EU, that was a bit different because it was put forward as a way to ensure geopolitical interests, foster competitiveness uh, against other, uh, let's say, world powers. And the, in the consulting firms, circular economy policies were about developing business strategies and business models, turning waste uh, into new jobs and to new economic opportunities. So if we have to summarize where how things uh, changed over time, circular economy policies first started dealing with waste between the 70s and the 90s. Uh, from the, the end of 19s to the 2010, we had starting to, uh, to link the, the outputs with the inputs, so reusing them in terms of industrial symbiosis or, uh, or, or as secondary resources. And then when the Ellen MacArthur Foundation kind of appeared, and many other initiatives as well, we started thinking that circular economy policies should think about maximum value retention, so economic value, uh, technical value, and many other values by creating jobs as well, by creating economic uh, benefits. So over here, we start seeing that even if all definitions of circular economy have common roots, there seems to be a divergent um, understanding of what circular economy is good for, what it can help us achieve, and also what is the utter motive, right? Because at the end of the day, we don't want circular economy as the end goal. We want it as a means to an end. So what is this end that different people seek for circular economy to do? The first branch of circular economy, as we have previously hinted, is that circularity can be used as an economic opportunity. So it, it's another way to develop economic growth if you want. Use waste, use whatever goes out of our system as a new way to create uh, profit within companies, but also within political systems. So for instance, you see here the World Economic Forum saying how we can transform something which is an environmental challenge into a business model that offers competitive advantage. You can see also here in the diagrams down below in the same article of the World Economic Forum saying that we need to move from a linear economy, not to a recycling economy, sorry, but to a circular one that would transform our current throwaway economy, that will tackle climate change, that separates the ability to achieve uh, economic growth from uh, consumption of natural resources, that will create jobs, that will create resilience, and that also has a business case that can make our economies more competitive and more sustainable. So you see here that circular economy can be seen as a, as a way to have a more sustainable development, uh, a way to create new business models like cradle to cradle, product as a service, and many other ones. And it's kind of a win-win. We can have um, economic development and we can have a reduction of environmental footprints at the same time. Another uh, branch of circular economy, of diverging branch, and we saw that with Germany and, and Japan, is that circularity can be used as a principle for waste and resource regulation. So this is more a technological solution to better link the outputs of a system with the inputs of a system. 
Over there, there are also many different documents or policies that are behind this. Here, for instance, one from the UN talking about the wastes, how waste management and circular economy are connected together. Over there, you will typically see solutions from the industrial ecology realm. Uh, you'll often see the Lansing hierarchy first going to refuse and then reuse and then recycle and all of that. And you also see how over the years in, in these policies, we went from some uh, waste directives going for treatment and permits and control to landfill and reducing landfill, but also having hazardous waste directives to uh, new legislations going towards the environmental protection and using waste as a resource. Uh, from 2015, we have circular economy there, etc., etc. So we see really how there has been a shift into waste management towards a circular economy. And then we have a third diverging branch that says circularity is part of a constrained uh, world of entropy. Uh, and this sits within more the steady state, uh, ecological economics and degrowth communities. What do they say is that, well, entropy laws excludes the possibility for a completely circular economic system. In other words, you cannot recycle uh, or reuse energy. Once it's used, it's done forever. At the same time, as soon as you combine metals together, then it's often uh, very hard to separate them back. Or in case of electronics, they're welded together or they're in such tiny proportions that it's very difficult to reuse them. And if even if you do so, well, recycling always kind of uh, omits or dissipates some parts of the material. So for them, entropy kind of excludes the possibility of this ideal circular economy and kind of reduces the upbeat promises of circular economy. It also says that we should not focus on increasing the share of recyclables through circular economy business models, but we should reduce the large proportion of non-recyclables. So it's a matter of priority. In their case, of course, reusing materials is a must, but we first need to close the tap or reduce our consumption first, and especially of non-recyclables, uh, and only then apply circular, uh, circular economy models or principles. So you see here that there is these two roots and three branches. Now, let's have a, a brief example of circular economy policies in cities and see how the current policies or actions fit within these three branches. So these are three case studies of Brussels on the left, Paris in the middle, and London on the right. These date a bit because the one on the left was from 2016 to 2020, the one in the middle from 2017 to 2020, and the one on the right I think was also 2016 or 2017 or so. Uh, along with a colleague of mine, we went and read all of these documents and classified their actions. So uh, in the Brussels case, they proposed 111 policies or measures of circular economy. In the case of Paris, there were 15 for 2017 and another 15 uh, that, will, that were foreseen for later on. And in the case of London, there were 15. And we tried to classify them in these three main branches of circular economy. So what we can see here is that a third, let's say, of these measures um, fit in the circularities and economic opportunities. So it's going to bring more either profits or growth, economic growth, uh, and develop new business models. Uh, another third of these policies fit in the circularity as a principle for waste and resource regulation. So we need to, to link waste and, and resources, and mainly through technical or technological solutions. And we see that none of them fit within circularity as a, as a constraint in the word of entropy, meaning that, well, first we need to reduce and then only talk about uh, reducing the, um, the non-recyclables and increasing the, the recyclable ones. And of course, there are, there are some that, can, uh, that we're not, we were not able to classify because it included measures such as you know, stakeholder engagement, governance, training, um, but also monitoring and stuff like that. And there you can see them below. So what does that tell us? Is that circular economy has 
let's say some common roots we all kind of agree what are uh, the the roots of circular economy that uh, linearity is bad and circularity is good but we also see that there are diverging interpretation of circular economy and of course that has a very profound effect in terms of policy making and in terms of what is a circular economy in terms of a company of a city or a nation's so what are your thoughts what do you think is the best branch for a circular economy and what is the one that you think is the most present today in circular economy policies if you want please put your thoughts in the comments below and we'll continue the discussion over there until then if you like the videos that we make please remember to subscribe to our channel and add suggestions for next videos in the comments thanks and see you in the next one cheers